Hello and welcome to another installment of uh, Art Now and Here live on Metrocast Channel 25 throughout the Metrocast public access cablecast community. Tonight we have a distinguished guest uh, in the studio from the hygienic uh, arts and uh, a man who wears many hats in the arts and he's a director at the hygienic, uh, Jim Stitfold. Hi guys. <laughs> um, this is going to be such fun. Um, so we're going to start with um, the annual Hygienic Art Show. It's like, oh my God, um, there is so much stuff going on for um, the beginning of the annual show. Um, of course, we start with um, the Hoot Nanny um, and um, the Screening Room. Those are all Friday night. Um, the Hoot Nanny is at the old Roadhouse, and that goes from um, six to nine. My wife Sherry sort of drives that whole issue, but it's a Hoot Nanny uh, fundraiser event. But at the same time, uh, a little hour later, is the screening room, and this is new film and we're talking about um, anybody who is doing stuff in their own room or um, out on the street and creating new film. Um, and that's at the screening room in the hygienic galleries. And that is from um, ooh, 7 to 9 or whenever it runs, wherever it goes. Um, but that same night, it's like, my God, we're going to have 4,000 people on Bank Street. Um, we have a first word, last word at um, uh, uh, in the Hygienic Galleries. That's a poetry slam. It's a, it's a sort of a semi-put-together, semi-poetry slam. It's like we don't know quite what's going to happen. But that's normal for hygienic. And then out in the art park, um, now that we are through all of the disaster of um, uh, uh, blonde, uh, it's, it's like weather, we're going to have, now it'll be 40 degrees and out in the art park, so the ice is all going to melt. So it's like, who knows that? <laughs> and this is all coming up here at the end of the month, which is uh, in, all in conjunction with the Salon de Independence. Right. And so it's um, January 31 through um, the 15th of um, February. And then we have the Rock Fix that night. So if you want to go up the Rock um, the Crocker House, and then there's Cabaret. Um, you know, I learned something about the Crocker House just today. I never knew that the lobby is designed by Saul LeWitt. Are you aware of that? The, the, that design... I am the, stunned. I did not know that. Yeah, I didn't know that either. That is designed by Saul LeWitt, who is a famous contemporary minimalist painter, and I didn't realize that, but that, it, I knew it was in that style. I always assumed it was in that style, but that is designed by Saul LeWitt, the, the lobby of the Crocker House Ballroom. Another New London art fact, factoid nugget. But yeah, that's, it, it's designed by, it's a work by Saul LeWitt, 2004, I believe. I thought I knew everything about New London. Yeah. But I did I not learned that, know that today on YouTube. Whoa. Where I learn most of, <laughs> most of what I know. That and B-movie trailers from the 50s is about the extent of my knowledge. But anyway. So I actually have to need to find out how to go online. I'm still working on my Hermes 3000 portable typewriter. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just upgraded from a teletype. So. <laughs> but if you really want to see a moment, um, it's the fashion in the ballroom. Right. Do we know who the bands are in the in the Crocker House Ballroom this year? Well, I've last got to go year, to 
Yeah, last no. year John Freeze, I know the John Freeze band uh, really kicked it kicked it out uh, at the Cracker House Ballroom, and that was I thought was one of the real great highlights of the hygienic uh, Salon de Independence weekend. Amazing. He rocks. Uh, I hope uh, I hope he can really you know really get it get the exposure that that he deserves because he's really one of the he really be great. He's all yeah, over the place. He's one of the really great uh, musicians. You'll you'll hear and in the style of the blues. He's, he can hold it down with some heavyweights. He's yeah. really good. Um, but the fashion in the ballroom, that's February 6th. That's Friday night. Now, I have to tell you that I never get to see the first act of fashion in the ballroom because I am a director for Mayfly. Now, the, the key here is um, we gather on Friday night as the fashion is happening and we put together seven playwrights, seven directors, and a whole bunch of actors and nobody knows anything about what they're going to do. So um, the directors in these bowls, they pick out names. Now they have a director. Now there's a new bowl and there's all the actors who will arrive and they pick out names. Now the director has a cast and the playwright has a director and a cast. Now that's Friday night. By seven o'clock the next morning the playwright has to create a play for seven o'clock the next morning. And by eight o'clock, we are in rehearsal and we rehearse until five. And then we go up at eight o'clock the next night. For, for those who uh, aren't familiar, Jim, among being uh, a member of one of the founding members of the Hygienic Art and on the, on the board of directors, is also a woodworker, actor, poet, Artist wearing many hats. Uh, I do lots of things. Yeah, that's really great. Uh, are you going to be participating in the uh, uh, the um, the Mayflower uh, May? Oh, the Mayfly. I'm a director. Mayfly direct. Oh, you're yeah. going to be doing. So you won't be acting. No, 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 no. I just you're be direct. Direct. And so um, the question is, um, where do we find rehearsal space all over? So. We do it, whatever. I take my cast out, I buy them lunch, and put them back in. And we go until 5 o'clock. And then we go up to the Cracker House, and then we do a tech rehearsal, and boom, we go up that night. Boom. Um, yeah, that, the whole weekend, the two weeks, I guess, surrounding the Salon oh, Independence nuts. are amazingly busy in the arts and all different media represented and uh, obviously the Salon de Independence uh, was one of the founding ideas behind the Hygienic Gallery and that is uh, as strong as ever. I was happy to be involved in that last year and literally if you've never seen it before the opening is shoulder to shoulder and the artwork oh is basically yeah. floor to ceiling. It's wall to wall. We will hang um, if anybody wants to bring us a piece in, you have to be there by 8 o'clock in the morning. And we load in starting at 8 o'clock in the morning. And we, we stop load-ins at 6 o'clock at night. And it just goes. If we don't close. We just keep going. And... Um, we will hang between 450 and 500 pieces in eight hours. And no judge, no jury. No judge, no jury, no... Um, no, no fee. No fee, no censorship. Right. That My, was one of the things that draw, drew me to the hygienic, uh, and I think it's one of, really the, one of the great things about the hygienic is the democracy, the de sort of democratic... Uh, 
um, mindset of the, of the hygienic with the open calls, the open shows, and obviously the salon to independence. And uh, it's a great, great opportunity for artists to get out and get their work shown and socialize with people, like-minded people, because pe people will come from all over to be involved in the salon well, independence. You know, in, actually in the 35, uh, 36 years this year, um, we have probably launched 700 artists. And there's some who are in New York who are making $30,000 for their portraits um, because they go very high end. Um, some people are staying around here and they're doing what they're doing. Uh, but um, with the, uh, the Young Artist Show, which is at the... Um, the guard, you know, if you, if, you, if you come down the guard and you go uh, uh, to Meridian Street, that's their gallery. Um, that show hangs for two weeks now. It used to be only hanging one day, but it is now, um, it'll, it'll hang for two weeks. And that's the Hygienic Young Artist Expo. Absolutely. And that... Uh, is uh, all in conjunction with the Salon Independence and again starts, kicks off on January 31st and that's at that guard art space sort of on the ground level, sub-ground level of the guard. Yeah, it, it got to the point where um, people were bringing in things that were like, mm, I don't know if I meant, I want my kid to see that. So we created the hygienic show, right. you know, the young artist show, right. and so that runs. It, it used to be only for twenty-four hours, but now it runs for the whole two weeks. Well, let's talk about speaking of young artists. Uh, the, presently at the hygienic is the Whalers and Lancers show uh, that is uh, ongoing and runs through the twenty-fifth of January. Um, and the Whalers and Lancers show is uh, really great. I was down there this afternoon and took some photographs, and it's an installation that you were instrumental in putting together that uh, showcases the work of, st of students, high school students from Waterford and New London High School. And it's really some great stuff. Oh, man. Um, when, we, th when the show started, um, my... Um, picture of hygienic was we were a professional gallery. And so I got a call from um, Waterford saying, can you do a high school show? It's like, no, we don't do this. And they leaned on me and leaned on me and I, I was like, okay, we'll do this. Um, so we created the Whaler Lancer show and it started out just a Whaler show. And then the superintendent of schools from New London called me and said, what are you doing? You're, you're Waterford. We are New London. And so it became the Waterford New London show. And um, we have, there are actually five major um, collectors of art who actually come to the, um, that opening, and they go through and they pick students where they think they're going to be you know, major careers. And so they buy. And so they say, I'm going to buy a student work for, I mean, relatively peanuts at this point. And they say, I'm going to save this piece for 15 years. And um, that's where we go from there. And I will take back to Waterford High School and New London High School somewhere between $2,000 to $200 worth of um, sales to the students. Well, that's a, that's, it's a really a great cause. It's a great way to support the arts. And if, Reg, if we could go to the slideshow, We'll take a look at some of this great artwork. It's uh, put together by uh, the students uh, from the Waterford and uh, New London high schools, and you'll see it's ama some amazing talent. 
And uh, here, right off the bat, is really, I think, one of the really strong pieces in the, in the show. Yeah, that's a wonderful, wonderful piece. And I mean, we hung uh, in about eight hours. We hung and um, pedestaled maybe 450 pieces in about seven hours. Yeah, it's an amazing collection of uh, work uh, in all sorts of different medium and uh, all sorts of different styles. And uh, really great to see young people doing art. It's, um, um, I don't know if you have a copy of the, um, the postcard that we sent out. Yeah. Um, but um, I don't know if you can see this. Yeah, no, it's, it's not on there. Yeah. Um, but um, this particular piece, when I was looking at this, I thought it was a nice small this piece is about this big and it's um, what New London is doing with the kids in their kilns and being able to do major major pieces I mean I mean this piece is like this big right right and this kid Eric is really really good yeah so if you want to buy a piece Eric stuff. You should go buy this one right away. It's sort of like an Egyptian motif. And Reg, if we go well, back it's almost to Mayan. Mayan. Right. Yeah. It's, it, it, it's interesting. The orange, and to see it in person, actually, the orange is slightly different. Oh, it's huge. Uh, than that. It's and beautiful. like you said, the, the size is, is really great. And there you can see on uh, the monitors, the, it, it's a, just a lot of work uh, and all sorts of different uh, um, People represent. Who were some of your contacts at Waterford New London High School that helped make this show possible? Oh, um, Andrew Aaron is my lead at um, Waterford at New London High, and they just changed everything over in Waterford High because everybody there retired. Um, so I just go in and I go, "Hi, I'm Stidvall," and they go, "Oh, hi, how are you?" And it's like. And we go from there. Yeah, it's, a, it's an amazing uh, bunch of stuff. And the, what's so great about the arts and for young people uh, is it, it's interdisciplinary. The arts uh, can make a, a, a better scientist. They can make a better doctor. They can make, make a better... So many... The, the influence of the arts can make so many people and so many different career paths more effective and more expressive. Well, you know... Um, um, when I was really doing a whole lot of theater in Waterford Eye and all around the community, um, what I found was the um, artistic directors for music were dentists, doctors, um, engineers, and I was just like, oh my God, where do these people come from? And it's just like, that's where their core is. That's the piece. Oh, oh, bring that back. Bring that back. <laughs> I don't know. It's going to have to cycle through. Can you bring that back? <laughs> it's, it's, it's cycling through at this point. Let's see. We can, we can go this way, I guess. We can go backwards. That one. Yeah. That's the one I bought. That's amazing. Yeah. Piece. Yeah. That is going to be, that is titled Sky. And I'll tell you right now, that is going to be... Uh, a fixture on art now and here. I think that's going to be my co-host. <laughs> oh my God, that's <laughs> when I can't get a guest. That's going to be my piece. guest. <laughs> it is. A, it is amazing, and it's it's it, it, it's so great to 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 see the, the paper mache and plaster uh, in pieces in this show because it's some of the strongest stuff. That was a picture I took of the hygienic this afternoon, and uh, the hygienic, the building itself, is uh, on a, a register, registry of uh, historic places, natural Well, that building was, uh, it was slated to be torn down. Right. Talk about that, uh, Reg, if we could come back. Um, talk about the history of the hygienic, if you would, please. Well, okay. Uh, as far as I know, um, there's a company, uh, a family, the Harris family, who built a whole bunch of buildings in New London. And they were the second largest whaling family in Connecticut. 
and they built this as a um, a rooming house for whaling sailors on the upper floors and a place for them to eat on the first floor. And um, then um, it went more abundant. Of course, the whaling industry went available, uh, down dead. And so um, by the late 18, 1800s and early 1900s, it became a whole series of places. Um, and then in 19, I think it's 11, uh, it became the hygienic restaurant. Now I have to understand that back then there was um, Upton Sinclair's The Jungle that exposed um, the meatpacking industry, whole meatpacking. So that they became, um, they named it the hygienic restaurant so it would be clean. And the hygienic restaurant was the only 24-hour eatery in New London for 50-plus years. And it was the place to eat. And then it, as things in inner cities went down, it went down. Um, and we were able to buy the building in 1979. And, but it took 10 years for this to work its way through courts. And um, then we created the hygienic galleries. Now, if you walk into the gallery, you know, the front gallery, um, you'll see all of the um, early 1950s coffee pots and the pie, you know, you know, glass thingies. And that's what we did. We restored that so you would look like you were walking into the 1950s. It's amazing. It's an amazing space, and uh, it somehow or another it works uh, as an art space and at the same time retains its uh, ambiance of being really a shorter restaurant. Yeah, well, we get lots of people who come in and ask if they can have <laughs> coffee. It's like, no, nobody does these big hundred you know, urns because you know, everybody's got this little thingies. Um, but um, so we sent them down to Muddy Waters and, or up to Washington Street. A lot of great places to eat down on Bank Street. There are. And honest to God, I mean, Sherry and I, um, three and a half years ago, moved to Harbor Towers. And um, our grocery bill has dropped like a rock. Our restaurant bill has gone through the roof. <laughs> Now, I understand you at one time had something, an initiative underfoot uh, to uh, repurpose the Capitol Theater. God almighty. Um, we have a whole nother hour show to talk about this. Uh, but the Capitol Theater is really good for walls and a roof. Um, but this... Not a lot you can do with the interior. The really interesting thing, and, and actually Vinnie Scarano, who was the president of Hygienic, found in the screening, uh, the camera room, um, a 1926 day article about how the Capitol Theater was converted from a, an office building into a movie theater. And so when you walk into the front of the Capitol Theater, and if you stand out front, if you can see through the windows, it steps up. So you have to get up to the booth. But it was originally flat floor. And so when you go in, now you have to go up to the ticket booth and you walk down because they created raked seating. Um, but it was originally flat floor, so that they poured all this concrete. Um, but now, how do you get all of that stuff out of there? It's like, I don't know. 
<laughs> it would be really great. Uh, I'd love to see the Capitol Theater repurposed as some sort of multimedia, media arts uh, facility. But at this point, from what I understand, it's a colossal undertaking. It's been vacant now for 41 years. Yeah. It's staggering to think yeah. of. It's hard to believe. But if you, um, if, you, if you could find somebody with the money to um, go in with you know, the concrete, drive it all out, and get it into dumpsters, and make it just a square box, and then say, okay, now what are we going to do with this? That's a whole different issue. Right, and that's, from what I understand, that's about what it would take because... It's about $2 million. Yeah, yeah, that's a start. And I think it was listed at one time, uh, fairly recently, for two hundred thousand. Was sold at tax au auction for twenty thousand. Right. It's always owned by out-of-state hands. It's yeah, it's always, two guys in New York. Right. They it's, bought it for twenty grand. The city owned it for a long time, and it's been owned by two different out-of-state owners. Right. It's a real shame. Anyway, let's get on to a better subject, which is the Coast Guard uh, anniversary that you are a oh big part God. of. Oh, my God. It's just like, where am I going to go from here? Okay. Um, starting in early May, um, you have to understand that the um, Coast Guard is, this is the 225th anniversary of the Coast Guard, and it's the 100th anniversary of the Coast Guard Academy. So, whoa, um, what we have is, oh my God, where am I going to go here? Oh man, there's so much stuff going on. Um, this is called the summer of 2015. And um, it is from May right through the uh, 1st of October. Um, uh, um, Barbara Naff is, uh, for um, New London, pretty much organizing a lot of this stuff. I, on the other hand, am the um, culture uh, chair for what's called the Liberty Appear. And um, it, it's just, I didn't know this until I even got into it. Um, in, during World War II, um, the United States was involved with World War II for something over 1,300 days. During that process, the United States built 2,710 Liberty ships. These are 441 um, ships that transported um, cargo to Europe. So that's two a day. Um, it's just like, oh my God. Um, the Rose of the Riveter was going on. So there are only three Liberty ships left in the world out of 2,710. One is in Greece, one is on the West Coast, and one, the John S. Brown, is on the East Coast. And so the target is to bring um, the John S. Brown to New London from September 9 to September 20 at um, Fort Trumbull Pier. 441 feet long, and we are trying to put together um, music and um, on plane um, painting and um, 1940s. Uh, music and films and all that. They have a performance space on deck. They have a perform performance space down beneath. And so um, I'm chair of this. So anybody wants to come and perform and bring music or whatever, call me. I'm in the book. 442-4020. <laughs> Can I do that? Um, and one, I should say, uh, I'm, I'm sure a big part of uh, the celebration will be the Coast Guard Band and the, all the various ensembles oh my in God. the Coast it's Guard just, Band. It's just going to be all over the map. But it goes from the 1st of May, bas basically, all the way through the 1st of October. And um, 
Oh, there's Lighthouse Tours, there's Visitor Center, walking tours, um, themed activities, uh, Heritage Park stuff with the water taxi, uh, light pole banner project, um, website, all over. And um, the city council has um, just captured the... Um, um, I'm not a computer person. So they captured whatever you um, do for computers. Um, it's called 225-225-coastguard.com. Now the web page is not up yet, but they have captured that domain. Right. So keep going and you'll keep finding it. And that's going to be the whole summer because this is the major event nationally for the Coast Guard. Well, with that as our, as our lead-in, uh, Reg, if we could queue up uh, the piece we have. If, if you've been watching Art Now and Here, you know the Coast Guard Band, Flute and Harp Duo, are really great friends of Art Now and Here. We did three pieces in conjunction with the Lyman Allen in the Palmer Gallery with uh, Megan Sesma and Lori Baynard, the United States Coast Guard Band, Flute and Harp Duo. And at this time, if we could take a musical interlude and play Made with the Flaxen Hair, Claude W.C. from the United States Coast Guard Band Flute and Harp Duo.
Well, that was uh, Claude W.C.'s Made with the Flax and Hair, and uh, I want to thank the Lyman Allen and uh, the Coast Guard Band Flute and Harp Duo for helping out with that. They're great, and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing uh, Megan and Lori. They're going to do a tour of some art galleries in New England this spring and uh, reprising their uh, uh, art and impressionism uh, through music uh, piece and essentially interpreting art with and music and uh, through music and it's an amazing amazing piece and thanks so much to Lyman and Al and they were really gracious in their help in putting that together and so we're looking forward to the Coast Guard anniversary and oh, I hope, absolutely yeah I the, you can't go wrong the musical uh, uh, components of the Coast Guard uh, band, whether it's the ensemble or the band in full, are unbelievable. And any chance you get to see the Coast Guard band in full up at uh, Leamy Hall or in uh, ensemble and the various ensembles, definitely check them out. And if you go to YouTube, you can find a bunch of stuff. And one of my favorite pieces is uh, Freaks and Mayberry uh, by the uh, Jazz Big Band, uh, original composition by Sean Nelson, who's a featured trombonist in the piece. Well, let's uh, change gears here. I want to uh, talk about some of your woodworking. You have a couple bowls uh, here in studio, and uh, I've seen a bunch of your different stuff uh, in various exhibits at the Hygienic. Talk about uh, your work as a, as a woodworker. Well, you know, it's really interesting. Um, I had started turning. A friend of mine gave me this old, decrepit um, Sears lathe in 1979 and I bought a book by a guy named Dale Nish who at the time was like the premier wood turner in America and it was four photographs each page and it was a little you know a couple of lines of text underneath each and I didn't read the text and I would give in you know some tools and I said mom damn I can do that and so, you know, <laughs> go in, and the first piece came off and hit me, and I have a couple of scars up here. Um, well covered by yeah, you. Yeah, I was just like, oh my God, there's blood running down my head. It's all right, I'll deal with that. And how um, I many you, you put something on a lathe at 950 RPM and it comes flying off, it's like, wham, oh damn, that hurt. Um, so I slowed it up and took, you know, little bits. Um, so what I do is I make bowls. And um, people give me trees. And I have great friends who give me trees. Now, the, the, t the deal is that for every... I, I have a friend who's got a, a bandsaw lumber mill and he cuts them into what lumber I want. But the deal is that for every inch thickness of the wood, it takes a year to air dry it. So um, this was four years being air dried. And then I put it on. Of course, things check, and you know, so I turned little things. I almost brought you. I almost brought you. Um, a friend of mine who had said, um, I want to do some rattles for kids, you know, to hang over their, you know, over their, um, the cribs. So I could, so it's like, well, I don't, my lathe is this big, so I can't do little things like that. So, but the process is the same. So I went and I did a whole series of rattles just to show him what I had done. And so over like five weeks, I had made nine rattles. And I said, here, you know, and so I give them away to bands. Um, but I got my, my best one. It was great. It was a beautiful rattle. And I had all holes so that the, you know, the rattle air would come out. And I got really, really excited and I glued it all together, and it was like, wonderful. Except I forgot to put the beads in it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, 
A low you impact can't ladder. hear anything in there. <laughs> well, what kind of wood is this actually? Uh, this actually, is, both of these are hickory. Right. And I've seen some of your other stuff, and it looks to be more exotic. Some of the different, more, a lot of different exotic woods. I only work with what people give me. I I refuse to cut down a good tree just for me. Um, so um, whatever happens, happens. And um, I may have a plank that's four inches thick and twenty feet long. And I may only get six bowls out of it, or I may get some goblets out of it, um, or some candlesticks, or whatever. Because, you know, you've got this end, and it's like, can we do that again? That's when it goes back <laughs> up the other way. Um, so, um, um, but um, when I turn, it's whatever comes out of there. And you know, I love working with wood. Uh, there are people who do um, you know, segmented bowls, and it's just like, you know, you've got to cut it this and this and this and this and this. It drives me crazy. I, you know, I only do whatever comes out of the tree. I could have a big bowl of cocoa puffs with one of these. <laughs> but well, I mean, some years ago, um, there was um, at the O'Neill Theater. Um, there was what w was called um, the Conference Tree. Huge Copper Beach, and um, everything for thirty-four years happened starting under the Conference Tree. So it was the most famous theater tree on earth. Right. And it was literally, everybody who knew theater knew the conference tree all over the world. And after 300 years, it went, I'm tired, I'm lying down. And lay down. Well, it's Waterford um, Park's property because the O'Neill rents from Waterford. So they came out and they cut it all up the firework, which was, you know, frankly stupid because Copper Beach is his, um, for heat value, it's basically worthless. But there was a branch that they couldn't get back onto the top of the trunk. It was seven feet long and 37 inches in diameter. I said, that's mine, don't you take that away. I got, I got to cut it into lumber. And I put it in the cellar when we were living in Quaker Hill. And after four years, Sherry said, James, can we have the cellar back, please? So I went, what the hell am I going to do with this? And I put it out and I you know, put a thingy on, you know, just a plank, you know, run it rough round on the bandsaw and, um, you know, put it on the lathe. And I made a bowl. And I was like, damn, I got a bowl out of this. So I etched it. Made from O'Neill Conference Tree, Stidful, and the date. And I said, I'm going to get 50 pieces out of this. So I went through and I have 50 pieces and I didn't even make a dent. So I, I'm going to turn it until it's done. <laughs> and I got 150 pieces and I asked each one and serial numbered it. And, but two and a half years later, I gave them all to the O'Neill. It's like, this is the conference tree. This is not me. I don't own this tree. I'm going to give it to the O'Neill. And so I gave them all to the O'Neill, and that's supposedly a $50,000 you know, donation to the O'Neill. You know, 300 bucks, you can buy any one of these. Yeah, it's, a, it's some really beautiful work, and uh, it's hard to, fun. Yeah, it's hard to capture on, uh, in, in, on camera the uh, grain, and the grain is really, really beautiful. and. Uh, Amazing patterns and beautiful, well, I didn't elegant, do that. elegant design. <laughs> Mother Nature did that. Exactly, it's uh, <laughs> it's amazing uh, to do woodworking. I unfortunately have never never done woodworking, uh, but uh, it's uh, really 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 beautiful to see them in person. And uh, well, we have fun. Yeah. You know, I'm seventy years old. That's like seventy years young. Yeah. And so um, when I was sixty-two. And my orthopedist retired me from being a stagehand. Um, 
So I was just, I'm not cutting my hair ever again. <laughs> That's a song, isn't it? <laughs> so it's 12 years. And you know what? It got to be this long, and it just stayed there. You know, I the song has actually almost cut my hair. <laughs> <laughs> but I haven't, I haven't trimmed this since 1983. Well, you're, not quite, you're not quite Billy Gibbons of ZZ Top <laughs> quite yet. No, no, no. Sherry would always love to be somebody who was have a full beard. You've you got to give me your hand. No, the other hand. Oh, okay. I have not put a razor to my face <laughs> since 1983. Really? Wow. Really? There's nothing there. Hmm. Yeah, it's... It's uh, really funny. Yeah, you could... Uh, that's what happens when you're Welsh, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I, I, but let me uh, ask you, and we're running out of time, and it's just been a great conversation here, and really great to have uh, somebody who's been in the forefront of the hygienic since its inception on Art Now and Here, and uh, looking forward to uh, um, the exhibition season at the hygienic, the Whalers and Lancers, the Salon de Independence, all the different activities revolving around the Salon de Independence, the Mayfly uh, Drama Festival at the Crocker House. The Crocker House Ballroom will also be hosting music. All sorts of things going on. Check out hygienic.org. All Absolutely. sorts of information there. Yeah. Okay, so let's, let's touch base on that. Let me, uh, I just want to ask you, uh, and we're, as I said, we're, we're almost out of time here, but for you, you mentioned uh, you've been at it now for a long time. What do you find the most gratifying thing about your career in the arts? Oh, God. Um, honestly, this has nothing to do with the arts. Um, I am um, one of the people who does um, the homeless breakfast at First Congregational Church. Uh, we do, um, we feed people anywhere from 60 to 100 people a morning. From 7 to 7.30, we only do 7 to 7.30, Monday through Friday. And um, my favorite moments um, are when, this is rare, uh, when I see a family, mom, dad, and two little kids, come in. And dad has been... Uh, a Wall Street guy, and he just got obliterated, and he's 55 years old. He's seven years from Social Security. He ain't, nobody's going to hire him. And so they take the kids out for breakfast because they no longer have money to feed them. I mean, this is no joke. And um, so they come in. And when you see these two little kids, it made me us like seven and nine, and we load them up. Um, and um, so um, that's when I just go to the moon. It's just like, uh. so if, um, I don't know if I can do this on air. It's public access. Uh, the FC but. FCC's uh, busy checking out uh, Hell's Kitchen yeah. and uh, the uh, Kardashians, probably. But if if you want to donate to the homeless breakfast, it's um, First Congregational Church, Union Street, um, and just put on the um, memo line um, the breakfast, New London breakfast. And this is a, definitely a time of year when uh, the need is really strong. Oh my God. A lot you of should have seen it now. yesterday morning. You know, I mean, it's just like, it's, you know, 7 o'clock in the morning, you know, there's like 100 people out there waiting just to get in, just to get warm. Oh, my God. You know, so they're going to be in for half an hour. Well, whether it's the First Congregational Church or the New London Meal Center, it's definitely a great cause. and Absolutely. Uh, really huge, huge need. Uh, 
uh, Pita Madri uh, at the New London Meal Center on Montauk is another yep. place you can look to uh, uh, contribute to the f food pantry. And suffice to say, uh, this is the time uh, probably the need is is the most. Uh, it's it's big uh, year round, but particularly uh, this time of year. I hate to see somebody uh, going hungry when it is uh, so cold out. I hate to see somebody going hungry at any time, of course. Well, Jim, thanks so much for coming down. Uh, Art Nowen here. It's been a pleasure. Uh, first of hope, ma hope many visits. Uh, well, the next now. time we got to have at least four hours. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know if Metrocast, I don't know if Metrocast is going to go for that. But uh, hey, you know, let me let me thank the Metrocast uh, Cablecast community. Metrocast, Joe, Reggie, Mary Jane, Reg. Thanks again. Super job on the switcher as always. Um, I want to thank New London and Waterford High Schools, all the teachers and administrators who help out with the arts. Keep it going with the arts. Arts are the very best of, represent the very best of us, and the investment in the arts will pay dividends in all sorts of ways down the road. Well, we're going to outro um, with uh, a short piece here, and with that, I'm just going to say this is art now and here, over and out. <laughs>